Hi everybody, Frank Finance here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're going to be discussing Clover Health, ticker symbol CLOV. For today's agenda on Clover Health, I'm going to give a price target and some thoughts around that. I'm going to give 2021 Q1 earning results. I'm going to give a brief business description. We're going to look at the fundamentals of Clover Health. This is going to be revenue, free cash flow. We're going to look at the balance sheet, shares outstanding, among some other metrics. We're going to look at the price history and then finally i'll give my thoughts on clover health if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing hit that like button now and enjoy the content all right so jumping into my price target for clover health i believe in the next 12 months it can get around ten dollars you may say hey it's already hit twelve dollars and that's exactly my point i do believe the downside potential is greater but with that caveat there could be excess returns if there are short squeezes there is some hype and some conversation around a short squeeze that could happen especially among the reddit crowds and just to add on to this i do think if the price continues to drop into the six and seven dollar range there could be an intriguing entry point that would you know but there would have to be a decent size drop here the name has some decent fundamentals around it, but it is a little overpriced right up front. So let's go into a little bit deeper about the business, the financials, and some other things that are going on with the name right now. All right, so jumping into 2021 Q1 results, the earnings per share came in at 13 cents, negative 13 cents, when compared to the analyst estimates of negative 10 cents. So they missed there by about 3 cents or around 30%. On the revenue side, they came in at $200.3 uh, million, and the analyst had them coming in at $192, so they beat it by about $7.73 million, or a 4% beat. So Clover Health is in the business of providing Medicare Advantage plans. They believe that it is one of the most undisrupted markets in healthcare currently, and they believe the spending is going to be around $270 billion up to $590 billion by 2025. If we look at their current market share as compared to um, United Health, CVS Athena, or Horizon, Blue Cross Blue Shield, we can see that currently right now they're coming in third in terms of market share, kind of around 25%. In 2020, if you compare that to 2014, they were less than 3%. So you can see that they've gained a considerable market share in the last six to seven years, and they continue to rise. You can see one of the biggest names on this list, United Health, has continued to shrink upwards of 55% down to the 40% range. And as the market continues to grow, per um, Clover's guidance, there should be a bigger pie for everyone. Even if they kept the same exact market share, the revenue could possibly increase. Now, something that people have been paying attention to a lot to lately is short interest. On CLOV, one reason why a lot of people are paying attention to this is the huge increase of short interest over the last six months. So in, the, in January of 2021, they're around $120 million of short interest, up to $570 million. The short percentage of float is at 36% currently, and compare that to six months ago in, in, in January, it was around 8%, so quite a considerable, uh, about four and a half times higher now than it was back in January. So this is something people are paying attention to, especially in anticipation of something like a short squeeze. Hey, if you like this type of content, please hit that like button. It helps me out a lot with the algorithm. Now back to your content. All right, so diving into the fundamentals for Clover, at the end of 2020, they racked up $690 million of revenue or about 51% year over year growth. Year prior to that, they had 61% growth. If we look at their growth profit, gross profit is, the margin has definitely been increasing as well as um, the total number. EBITDA, that EBITDA margin has been increasing, so less negative than they were before. And net income has also been relatively, uh, I can't see a huge trend here in any one direction, but it was substantially from a net income margin, it was substantially higher um, and less negative than it was years prior. All right, so jumping over to the balance sheet, if we look at the first quarter of 2021, at $684.6 .6 million in total cash and short-term investments. If we take that down to total current liabilities, 173, so they have more than enough cash to cover that. And if we go down to total liabilities, 278, so they have more assets than they have liabilities. That's good to see. 
One of the things I wanted to note here was that the total liabilities had decreased about by $150 million. That's pretty substantial. So other non-current liabilities decreased by 75, and then they had long-term debt decreased by about another 75. So those are two where, that's where the liabilities decreased. On the asset side, you'll see that there was a pretty big increase in total assets as well from 189 million up to 809. So other current assets went up by about 10. Let's see where the big increase was, accounts receivable. Short-term investments went from 4 million to 280 and cash equivalents went from 92 to 404. Not sure why those increases were as much as they were. Just looking over the last couple of quarters, seems to be like a big jump here. Um, need to look at that a little bit further, but overall the balance sheet looks nice. All right, so next up, free cash flow. They haven't been making money. Cash from operations is negative at $174 million. Capital expenditures is also pretty low at $0.6 million, but cash flow is negative, so I'm not gonna be able to give you a price to free cash flow on this one. All right, next up, shares outstanding hasn't increased substantially. Um, it's only increased by about 1%, so that's good to see, nothing crazy here. Hey, if you don't mind, tickle that like button. Thanks so much. All right, so when it comes to growth, if we remember year over year growth last year was around 50%, Analysts have them coming in at about 21% for this next year with revenue about 819 million with at the end of fiscal year 2022. So about a year and a half from now, bringing in about 1.07 billion or about 30% year over year growth from full year 2021. I think it's worth noting in their Q1 results, they also gave guidance that was very close to the analysts. So no discrepancies between what the analysts are expecting as well as the company. All right, so looking at price history over the last year, you can see they had a slight pop up from $10 in October. They kind of settled down back into that $10 range, had another pop in December, early January, and have really been on a decline all the way up until May, the beginning of June. And then there was this huge, what appears to be some sort of squeeze. I think they went all the way up to 20, uh, 20 roughly 28 bucks. Um, and then they've been all the way back down to where they're at currently, where they're trading around $9.50. All right, so for my final thoughts, Clover could definitely have a squeeze in its future. If you look at AMC, they had a huge spike and then it kind of died down, even started to depress for a couple weeks. And then there was this huge, huge, huge jump and then it leveled off and kind of plateaued. And that's kind of where we are with AMC. It kind of looks very close to that for Clover. Um, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised. It looks like a very similar chart. Um, the, the only thing that's different here and the thing that I, I think is important to note is Clover has a better financial outlook than AMC by far. The short interest is still high, you know, compared to AMC. It's, you know, there's a lot of very good similarities, but I, but I have a less hard time believing this one as a fundamentals type play over uh, AMC because the fundamentals aren't there on that play. But this isn't an AMC uh, you know, bashing session. It's basically just taking what we know with AMC and applying it to Clover. So I do think a short squeeze could happen again on this name. There is a good short interest out there. There is some historical precedence for this, especially in the last couple months. We've seen this um, you know, here recently with AMC. Don't I wouldn't be surprised if it happened again. But the reason why I'm conservative on my price target is I do believe that fundamentally, when you look at the fundamentals, it has been trading at a, a higher multiple than it should be trading if you're comparing it to other stocks, such as um, you know, it's in those priced earnings around 20, or uh, you know, the growth is depressing from about 60 one year to 50, now down to 20 and then to 30. So the growth is slowing down in this company. They're still not profitable yet. These are things that you need to take in consideration. Do they have a good outlook? Do they have a good roadmap for the future? Yes, I don't think their business model is terrible. They look like they're in a good industry and they are positioning themselves for a long-term, you know, a long-term good company. But does it mean their valuation is correct today? I don't think so. But uh, you know, if if it if the price depressed, I think the price action itself around six to seven dollars could be intriguing and it could be a good indication for you to enter that right it maybe back up into the eight dollar to ten dollar range and then you know sell it 
and then rinse and repeat unless things change substantially. Please consider subscribing, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this analysis and Clover in general. Hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching. Frank Finance, out.